Okay, so um, we are discussing cardiac hypertrophy, and we've now get we're now getting on to pathological hypertrophy. So we've discussed how in pathological hypertrophy, what happens is the cardiomyocytes of the heart get thicker, but they don't increase their length that much. This results in the walls of the heart impeding in on uh, the actual chambers and reducing the amount of blood that the chambers can accommodate. This is going to lead to the amount of blood that the heart will pump from the venous to the arterial side in a minute going down, i.e. the cardiac output or cardiac function is going to go down. In addition, what often accompanies uh, this um, hypertrophy of the cells is you often also get fibrosis occurring at the same time, which means you're bringing in uh, fibroblasts. Okay, so you're bringing in cells which make connective tissue, and they are producing connective tissue. So you're putting in a huge amount of new connective tissue into the walls of the heart. Now, this connective tissue um, is um, it's, it's firstly going to help make the walls thicker, even thicker still, which means they're going to impede even more on these uh, chambers. And also, it's absolutely incapable of contracting. So it's not going to actually help cardiac contractility at all. So you often find that the pathological hypertrophy of the cardiomyocytes is associated with fibrosis, this laying down of new connective tissue in the walls of the, um, uh, of the, in the, walls of the heart. Okay, so now let's discuss what actually causes uh, cardio, uh, well, pathological hypertrophy. And basically, it's the body's response to the pressure that the heart is feeling from the blood uh, being too high. So let me explain what I mean by that. So, why would the heart try and make the walls thicker? Well, the idea would be that um, this is going to increase the force of contractility of the heart. You'd think that this would increase the strength of the heart by thickening the walls. So that appears to be why the heart tries to do this. So basically, what is happening is the heart is struggling. So the starting point is that the heart is really struggling to pump blood into the aorta, let's say. So let's deal with the left ventricle, but um, the same is true of the other ventricles as well. So what could result in the left ventricle struggling to pump blood into the aorta? Well, two things. If the aortic blood pressure is far too high, so if you have very high blood pressure, so if the aortic blood pressure is very high, then that means that the um, left uh, ventricle is having to push the blood into a blood vessel that is absolutely stuffed full of blood at a very high pressure. So that means that it's a hard work, basically, for the left ventricle. So the push that the blood is going to uh, exert back on the walls of the uh, left ventricle is going to be greater. Okay, so um, when it contracts on blood that it's trying to squeeze into a very high pressure system, it's going to feel more resistance, basically, and that resistance is what's going to trigger cardio, um, cardiac remodeling, pathological hypertrophy. Okay. In addition, what could happen is you could have a heart attack or a myocardial infarction. If you have a heart attack that occurs in a portion of the heart on the left ventricle. So let's just say that a portion of the left ventricle is going to undergo myocardial infarction. So in fact, we'll have a greater, we'll have a massive, great big lump of the wall of this um, left atrium undergoing infarction. So if all of this cardiac tissue in this turquoise portion here has infarcted, then that is now not contracting. Okay. So let's say the person managed to survive the heart attack, but he's now got a great lump. Of the, of the heart that is not capable of contracting. So that means that this left ventricle is now very weak because it's lost this massive great lump and its ability to push the blood out is reduced. So that means that the rest of the left ventricle is now going to um, feel more resistance as well. It's going to have a harder job. So it's basically how hard are you making 
the other cells of the heart work. So both of these, um, both of these eventualities, both aortic blood pressure being too high or a heart attack of a huge amount of tissue, is going to lead to the workload for the heart being too high. So the stress on the heart is going to be too high. And this stress on the heart appears to be what drives pathological hypertrophy. So what happens is it causes the, um, the walls of the heart to thicken up. So all of the remaining cardiomyocytes are going to undergo this pathological hypertrophy where they become thicker but not much longer. And this isn't actually going to help. It's designed to help but it doesn't seem to actually help, okay? So, um, yeah, so the heart tries to rectify the problem of not, of being, of struggling to pump the blood out into the aorta by hypertrophing the, um, the ventricular myocytes, but it doesn't really work. It actually makes the situation worse. Okay, now a few more things to discuss. Another cause that of um, too much stress on the wall of the heart, certain congenital genetic defects can lead to uh, congenital pathological hypertrophy. So let's discuss these now. So we'll discuss an example of a genetic defect. So a genetic defect that is often seen uh, with regards to um, pathological cardiac hypertrophy is mutations in the myosin heavy chain beta. So, let's discuss the structure of myosin. So, within the cardiomyocytes, uh, you have the sarcomeres, which are the contractile units. And basically, one of the key components of the contractile machinery within the cell is a protein known as myosin. So, let me just briefly discuss with you the structure of myosin. So, myosin is made up of three proteins, basically. It's made up of the myosin heavy chain, which is what I've drawn so far. So this entire thing is the myosin heavy chain. So you have the tail of the myosin heavy chain, okay? And then over here, you have the head of the myosin heavy chain. So this is the head of the myosin heavy chain. And by the way, the myosin heavy chain is often abbreviated to MHC. So don't let that, don't confuse that with major histocompatibility complex uh, from immunology. This it refers to the myosin head, um, heavy chain, okay? And this is the tail of the myosin heavy chain, tail of myosin heavy chain. Okay, so this entire thing is the myosin heavy chain. Now basically you wrap a few more proteins around this stalk between the head and the tail, okay? And these are the light chains. So here's the first one. So this is what's known as the essential myosin light chain, or just the essential light chain, often abbreviated to ELC for short. So essential light chain, okay? And this is also referred to as the ELC. And then you also have another protein wrapping around further down, and this is known as the regulatory light chain. So here's the regulatory myosin light chain. So myosin consists of these three proteins, the myosin heavy chain, and these two myosin light chains, the essential light chain, the ELC, and the regulatory light chain, the RLC. So, let me colour these in. So, we'll colour the two uh, light chains in. So, here's the essential light chain in blue there. And then, in orange, here's the uh, regulatory light chain. And they are both attached to uh, the heavy chain, which I won't colour in. Right. So, there are two genes, two major genes for this myosin heavy chain, which are used in the heart. One is the major, uh, sorry, the myosin heavy chain uh, beta, and the other is the myosin heavy chain alpha. Okay. Now the alpha is the main one that seems to be expressed in um, cardiomyocytes during adult life. 
the beta chain is the one that's majorly expressed in the fetal life. However, mutations in this major, um, sorry, I'm thinking major histocompatibility complex, uh, myosin heavy chain, mutations in this myosin heavy chain beta see, are associated with congenital pathological cardiac hypertrophy. So, we note that uh, these mutations are dominant, so you only need one of them, and they appear to be loss-of-function mutations. So, it's conceivable that if you lose function of one of the genes uh, in your MHC beta um, uh, proteins, then you'll reduce the amount of functional uh, myosin heavy chain betas, so you won't get as good contraction, and that could lead to uh, the other cardio, well, the cardiomyocytes feeling too much stress because they're not going to be able to eject the blood as well uh, from the left ventricle, and that could lead to them feeling too much stress, and then that would uh, lead to the pathological hypertrophy. So it's conceivable that the mutations in the uh, myosin heavy chain beta uh, could cause pathological hypertrophy like that, but we're not really that sure of how uh, these mutations in um, major myosin heavy chain um, beta actually lead to uh, pathological hypertrophy. But we do note that loss of function mutations in this, and just one copy of this loss of function mutation in um, myosin heavy chain beta, can lead to pathological hypertrophy. Okay, and it's from this congenital genetic defect. So, um, overall then, what happens is the heart undergoes this pathological remodeling, as it's called. So it's often called remodeling. And it is in order to try and strengthen the heart so that it can deal with this... Um, with, the, with pumping the blood into the aorta, basically. Uh, so it's basically a response to the heart struggling to pump blood, basically. Okay, but the reality is it doesn't help and it actually reduces cardiac function further. W one other last thing that I want to discuss is that when cardiomyocytes undergo pathological hypertrophy, they start producing two important hormones which are used as markers for um, cardiac um, pathological hypertrophy, which are AMP, standing for atrial natriuretic peptide, and also BMP, standing for uh, brain natriuretic peptide. Okay, so uh, let me just write, I'll write AMP's name, atrial natriuretic peptide. And then BMP is the same thing, except brain natriuretic peptide. So the spelling is the same. Right. So those uh, two um, molecules are used as indicators of uh, pathological hypertrophy. So you would measure the levels of usually AMP in the blood of people to uh, determine whether or not they have had pathological remodeling of the heart.